You've heard of mystery black boxes. Well, here's a mystery white box. There's no branding on this anywhere. It looks like it has residue of where it might have been glued onto something. But otherwise, there's no stickers or writing or anything on it. On this side, it has an HDMI port. On this side, it has composite video and left and right audio. And here it has USB power and a switch for 720p and 1080p. So it's obviously some kind of video conversion device. I'm leaning towards thinking this is for converting composite video to HDMI because if it was from the other way around you would think it would automatically detect the resolution instead of having a switch for it. And if this does a decent job at converting composite to HDMI then that will come in handy for me because I have this PC set up with an HDMI capture card as I featured in a previous video. It's the Pile P-Link 5 and the hardest thing about installing this was opening up the case of the computer and putting in the card. Once I did that, Windows automatically loaded the drivers and it works perfectly with Windows 10's built-in camera app. Now I'll try connecting the mystery white box device to the capture card using the world's thinnest HDMI cable. See if it produces any kind of video signal that the computer recognizes. It says no signal. And that's not the capture card displaying that, because if I unplug it, it changes back to that other message we saw earlier. Please connect a video source. So I'll connect the video source. And within a few seconds, it changes to no signal. I have it set to 1080p. I'll try switching it to 720p. It briefly flashed on the screen 720p at 60 hertz. Try switching it to 1080p. 1080p at 60 hertz. So it is working. Now let's try connecting a video source to it. Here's the composite video output of a Sony DVD camcorder just off screen on the left there. Now I'll try plugging it in. And we do get a video signal. So that's converting composite video to HDMI, which the computer is capturing. I have it set to 720p, and the video capture software is set to 720p at 60 frames per second. This is a test of using the Sony DVD camcorder's composite video output into this mystery white box device, which is converting it to HDMI, which is being captured by the computer. So we'll see how this turns out. This is a widescreen video signal, so it'll match the aspect ratio of what it's capturing. Well, I think that looked pretty good actually, and it does appear to be capturing at 60 frames per second. But what would happen if I switched this camcorder to 4x3 aspect ratio? Because the vast majority of composite video that anybody's going to want to capture, or even just display on their TV, is going to be 4x3 aspect ratio. So here's a test of using it to capture 4x3 aspect ratio video. And obviously this does not look correct because everything is getting stretched out to widescreen. So that's going to be a problem with this unless your media player or video editing software is capable of squishing it back down to a 4x3 aspect ratio. Everything is going to look stretched out. So here's a sample video I captured of a 4x3 video source and obviously that does not look correct if I just play it in Windows Media Player. But if I open it in VLC Media Player and then go to the video menu, go to aspect ratio and change that to 4x3, now that looks correct. More advanced video editors do let you change the aspect ratio of a clip, but basic ones like iMovie or in this case Microsoft's new ClipChamp do not. Because if I go to that video file I just captured and wait for it to prepare and drag it down to the timeline, you can see it's just stretching out the widescreen. And I don't think there's... Yeah, if I try to downsize it, you can see it keeps the same aspect ratio, so that's not going to work. Luckily, there is a way to change the aspect ratio of a video without needing to re-encode it, so there's no loss of quality. 
is called FFmpeg. You can find it at ffmpeg.org. You go to download and scroll down. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm going to be using the Windows version. So scroll over to the Windows icon and then you go down to Windows Builds by BTBN. Then scroll down and the one you want is FFmpeg Master Latest 164 GPL.zip. And you download that. So here it is in my downloads folder. You just double click on it. Click on it again. Then go to bin. And the file you want is FFmpeg.exe. To make things easy, I'm just going to copy it into my user folder, which is right here on the desktop. So just click and drag it there and copy it over. And now we're also going to take that video file we want to change the aspect ratio of, which is in my camera roll folder. To make things easy, I already renamed it to incorrect.mp4 because normally it gives it this long file name that's difficult to type in, so I just made it easier. Copy that to the user folder. Now I go to a command prompt, just type CMD, and here you are in your user folder. You have ffmpeg.exe and that video file. And the command you type is ffmpeg-i to specify the input file, which in this case is called incorrect.mp4. Then you type dash aspect 4 colon 3 dash C copy. And then you specify the output file name and I'll call it corrected dot mp4 and it shows a bunch of scary messages on the screen but just ignore that type exit to get out the prompt and once you go to your user folder here you'll see the new file called corrected dot mp4 now for some reason when you open it in windows media player it still shows the incorrect stretched out aspect ratio but if i open it in vlc you can see it now plays at the correct aspect ratio without needing to change it. And more importantly, if we now open that file in a video editor and drag it into our timeline, it now shows up as the correct aspect ratio. Here's another test of capturing video from the Sony DVD camcorder using the mystery white box device and the method I just showed to correct the aspect ratio. So now you can see it is a proper 4x3 image. And it is multi-system. I have it connected to my Sony Mavica floppy disk camera whose video output is switchable between NTSC and PAL. So if I switch it to PAL, we get a full color PAL image from it. But being able to get good results from a live camera feed is a pretty low bar because it is an inherently clean and stable video signal. And the same definitely cannot be said about videotape, especially VHS. So now let's try capturing some video from everybody's favorite VW Jetta instructional tape. Say, could you pop the hood, Callie? Sure. Great. I want everyone to see a couple of things before we move on. Now when you open the hood, place the prop rod in the hole identified by the arrow. You should check fluids when your Jetta is cold and on a level surface. That way you get a more accurate reading and prevent overfilling because the fluids will have settled. The engine oil dipstick is marked in red for easy identification. And if you look for a dipstick to check the automatic transmission fluid level, well, you're not going to find one. Wait, you're not? I thought all automatic transmissions had a dipstick. Well, most do, but your Volkswagen is a little different. The transmission is sealed because it requires minimal maintenance and a unique fluid that helps reduce wear. So you should see your Volkswagen dealer for service. Well, I think that doesn't look too bad for VHS, but this is about as good as it can get because this was a commercially and professionally mastered tape made on decent quality tape stock. And as you can see, it was recorded at SP speed with a hi-fi stereo soundtrack. Now, how about something a bit more challenging? A homemade recording of analog cable that was recorded at EP speed. You know how much you average a day? 40 bucks. I had no idea being a beggar could be so lucrative. He's not a beggar. He's a street performer. 
How romantic. You have no idea. Well, you can't expect HD quality from this kind of source material, although this Sony VCR does its best to try to enhance it with what they called Reality Regenerator. But at least the image is stable, unlike many VHS EP captures I've seen. I also tried capturing a macrovision encoded tape and it didn't seem to be affected by it at all. You stick out like a sore thumb around here. <laughs> Me? What about you? I fit in better than you. At least I'm wearing cowboy boots. Oh, yeah, you blend. Well, everything was going fine until I tried playing this head cleaner tape, which has a stereo audio test on it, and I noticed the left and right channels are reversed. This is your third cleaning. Your video and audio heads will now be cleaned. This is a mono audio test. Stereo audio test, right channel. Stereo audio test, left channel. Your video and audio heads are now clean. Press stop and eject tape now. Do not rewind. I double checked all my connections. I even switched to a different VCR just in case that was the problem. I checked the HDMI capture card with my camcorder again. Channels are fine coming out of this. Channels are fine coming out of the VCR. The problem is, even with the cables plugged in where they should go, the white one into the left, the red one into the right, it's reversed. I don't know if this is just a weird quirk with this particular unit or all these conversion devices have the audio channels reversed but if you get one of these you should test it by plugging in only the left channel and make sure that comes out of the left speaker and plug in the, only the right channel make sure that comes out of the right speaker if they're reversed you'll have to plug the right channel into the left input and vice versa to get it to actually come out correct Speaking of audio, if you're going to be capturing from a mono VCR or a mono camcorder and you only have one audio cable coming out of it, please either use a Y cable to connect it to both the left and right inputs or fix in editing. Because no one wants to watch a video which only has audio in one channel. If you're going to be capturing video from a vintage computer or video game console, you'll definitely want to have a CRT set up to monitor the action because this setup has a lot of input lag. And if you're wondering if the audio and video are in sync, the following video clip has the slamming of a trunk lid, which serves as a perfect test slate. And checking that in my video editor, I determined that the audio is 4 frames ahead of the video at 60 frames per second. Well, that about covers Jetta's comfort and convenience. Now let's move on to Jetta's performance. Let's do it. Owning a Volkswagen means that you're getting a car that's designed for fun-to-drive performance. Everything about driving one feels different. You feel the road, the car, and how you're connected to it all. The more you're in the driver's seat, the more you'll experience what German engineering is all about. I managed to pry open the case, and on the bottom of the circuit board it says Mini AV to HDMI 1080p version 3.0 from 2012. And it has two main chips. This one I tried prying off the heatsink, but despite how haphazardly it was placed, it's really stuck on there, so I don't want to risk breaking it. So unfortunately, we won't be able to get a look at any markings on that chip. But that's the chip that converts the analog video and audio to digital, deinterlaces the video, upscales it to HD, with the switch to select either 720p or 1080p, then this chip converts it to HDMI for the output. This chip is a Silicon Image SII 9022 ACNU and you can look up the data sheet for that but it basically just takes uncompressed digital video and converts it to HDMI. The only other thing of note on the circuit board is a pinout for a serial port probably used for debugging and possibly for firmware updates 
for these chips. Considering that these little composite to HDMI converter boxes cost anywhere between six and ten dollars on sites like Amazon, eBay, and AliExpress, I really can't complain. The only thing really wrong with it is that the left and right audio channels are reversed and that can be easily fixed by swapping the cables. And also that it stretches out everything to widescreen, but like I showed, that's pretty easy to fix using FFmpeg. But considering that the HDMI capture card I'm using it with costs around $100, if all you're going to do with this setup is just use it to capture analog video, that doesn't really make sense. You'd be better off getting a purpose-built setup designed exclusively for capturing analog video. But since I already wanted to have an HDMI capture card anyway, then this kind of setup is useful for me. It may not be the highest quality setup, especially since it doesn't have an S-Video input, but if I just want to have something that's quick and easy to set up, that doesn't take any extra time to de-interlace and upscale the video, then this will come in handy for me. Ugh. What's the matter? There's no meat in this. The girls wanted vegetarian. Lesbian lasagna. <laughs> 